Here we are now at the end of the season, scratching our heads, wondering what the heck went wrong. What was the issue for the Chargers this year? A team that some had picked to represent the conference in the Super Bowl. This is a team that has been such a disappointment. Mm -hmm. Several teams and players entered this year with so much hype and promise, only to fall well short of expectations. So, let us dive into the 10 biggest disappointments of the 2023 NFL season. Jacksonville Jaguars Trevor Lawrence had a breakout sophomore season under new head coach Doug Peterson and guided the Jaguars to their first AFC South Division title in five years. The future was ultra bright in Duval County. The Jaguars were sitting pretty at 8-3 with six weeks to go, and they looked very poised for a second straight division crown. Only then to unravel and completely collapse entirely out of nowhere. The Jaguars inexplicably lost four games in a row, with Lawrence becoming a turnover machine and the defense failing to stop a nosebleed. After defeating the Carolina Panthers in Week 17, Jacksonville needed only a win against the hapless Tennessee Titans to secure the division. But the Jaguars just kept getting in their own way, committing mistake after mistake after mistake in a stunning 28-20 loss. The Houston Texans win over the Indianapolis Colts, allowed to CJ Stroud and company to steal the division crown instead. While the Jaguars missed the postseason with a 9-8 record, it just wasn't supposed to be like this for a team loaded with so much talent on both sides of the ball. What in the world happened? Los Angeles Chargers The Chargers ended a four-year playoff drought last year with a 10-7 record, but they completely choked that 27-point lead against the Jaguars in the wildcard round. Nonetheless, the pieces were there for the Bolts to at least be a playoff team again. Justin Herbert was going to take it to another level with Kellen Moore as his new offensive coordinator, and the presences of Keenan Allen, Mike Williams, and Austin Eckler were going to ensure consistent offensive efficiency. Oh, and of course, not to mention the arrival of rookie in 2023 first-round pick Quentin Johnston. Joey Bosa, Khalil Mack, Derwin James, and Asante Samuel Jr. were also going to ensure that the defense stayed afloat. Or so we all thought. Williams suffered a season-ending ACL tear in Week 3, but Allen did step up with another 1,000-yard season despite missing four games. Johnston, however, was hardly a factor, with just 431 receiving yards and two TDs. Eckler was awful in his contract year, finishing with only six total touchdowns after racking up 38 over the previous two seasons. Herbert himself missed the final four games with a finger injury, but he too wasn't his normal self throughout the year, averaging 241.1 passing yards per game, nearly 40 less than his career average. The defense was an absolute mess once again under Brandon Staley, as a humiliating 63-21 blowout loss to the Las Vegas Raiders was finally the last straw for ownership, who fired Staley and GM Tom Telesco after the game. The Bolts finished a miserable 5-12, which has been the franchise's worst record since 2014. 30-year quarterbacks. There was a time where the 2021 NFL quarterback class was viewed as one of the deepest and most talented ever. Now that we've had about three years to evaluate it, <laughs> allow us this stat from the good folks at the 33rd team to sum it up for you. Mac Jones is done in New England. Zach Wilson should never take a snap for the Jets ever again. Not even in practice as Aaron Rodgers' is backup. Trey Lance didn't get a single snap as the third stringer in Dallas. Justin Fields is been inconsistent at best, ditto for T-Law, who is once viewed as a generational QB prospect. But aside from Lawrence, the rest of the QBs selected that year may entirely find themselves holding clipboards on the bench. Washington Commanders Defense Look, nobody thought that the Commanders would be a Super Bowl contender this year. But if the defense played up to its usual standards, many had figured that they would at least vie for a wildcard berth after falling just short of the postseason a year ago. Instead, the Commanders went from number 7 scoring D in the league to dead last. After allowing just 20.2 points per game a year ago, the Commanders allowed 30.5 per game. Washington also ranked last in total yards allowed and passing yards allowed. The so-called vaunted pass rush? Uh, well, let's just say that Montez Sweat led the team with 6.5 sacks. And, uh, well, he was sent to the Bears ahead of the trade deadline. Deron Payne, coming off a career-high 11.5 sacks, had just four. And Chase Young was traded to San Francisco ahead of the deadline as well. The Commanders limped to a 4-13 finish, mercilessly costing head coach Ron Rivera his job. How this D went from championship level to one of the absolute worst ever, despite mostly the same personnel, is absolutely beyond us. Derek Carr 
Look, with Tom Brady retired and out of the NFC South, the path was there for the New Orleans Saints to reclaim the division that they dominated for most of the previous decade. Following his release from the Las Vegas Raiders, Carr signed a very lucrative four-year deal worth $150 million with the Saints. With the best QB in the division, coupled with a very, very soft schedule, the pieces were all there for New Orleans to return to the playoffs. Well, uh, unfortunately for the Saints, Carr did not play up to his usual standards with this new team. He he was just hot and cold all season long and left three separate games due to injury. The offense then seemed to perform better in those three contests when Jameis Winston took over. Carr also had several childish temper tantrums at his receivers and offensive linemen throughout the year. The Saints won their final two games to finish 9-8, but it was too little too late. Baker Mayfield and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers won the division via tie break with an identical 9-8 record. Most of New Orleans top stars performed up to their usual standards this year, but Carr did not and it's largely why the Saints just missed the postseason for the third straight year. Cincinnati Bengals defense. Losing Joe Burrow for the final seven games with a wrist injury was a very tough blow. But you know, backup Jake Browning played just fine in his place. Browning won four of seven starts and gave Cincy every chance to stay alive in the postseason race. But it was the Bengals' defense, not Burrow's injury, that ultimately cost Cincy a third straight playoff berth. Only Washington gave up more total yards than Lou Anarumo's unit, and after finishing sixth in scoring defense a year ago, the Bengals ranked 21st this year. Their usually stingy secondary also finished 28th, allowing 248.4 through the air per contest. Even if Burrow is healthy next year, this defense has to improve if the Bengals are to rebound in 2024. Denver Broncos The Broncos 8-9 record wasn't exactly the disappointment here. It's more how the season played out, and the whole Sean Payton dug for them. The Broncos gave up 2023 first and 2024 second round picks to the Saints to acquire Payton. His job was to simply fix Russell Wilson, whom Denver gave a $245 million extension a year earlier. After a 1-5 start, Wilson finally began turning it around and led Denver to five straight Ws. Heck, they're in the playoff race at 7-6 with four games to go before suffering back-to-back -back losses. And then, uh, the fire erupted. Payton benched Wilson for Denver's final two games in favor of Jared Stidham because of injury guarantees on the star QB's contract. If he got in injured, Denver would have owed Wilson $37 million in guaranteed money for 2025. Oh, the Broncos are basically running Wilson out of town after giving up a King's ransom to the Seattle Seahawks for his services. We beat the Chiefs. They, they came up to me during bye week and they told me that uh, if I didn't change my contract, my injury guarantee that I'd, I'd be benched for the rest of the year. So, hey, congrats to the Broncos then. In one year, they gave up a package highlighted by three first and three second rounders for Wilson and Peyton. And that's gotten them... Where, exactly? The Atlanta Falcons offense. Look, it's easy to blame the quarterbacks and Arthur Smith, but truth be told, almost everyone on Atlanta's offense underperformed this year. Workhorse running back B. John Robinson at least came as advertised with 1,463 yards of offense and eight total touchdowns. Drake London had more receiving yards compared to his rookie year, but he also had three less receptions and two less TDs. After a very disappointing sophomore year, tight end Kyle Pitts didn't fare much better in 2023. We well, you know Desmond Ritter and Taylor Heineke aren't the best quarterback duo, but how do you you underachieve with that much star power and a top-tier offensive line? And how does an offensive-minded coach like Smith fail to get the most out of this group? A third straight 7-10 finish cost Smith his job. And mind you, it'd be very nice if the front office could have gotten him a half-decent QB. Bryce Young Nobody was saying that Young had to be an MVP and lead the Panthers to the playoffs in his first year. But I'm pretty sure we all thought that the first overall pick of 2023 would leave a much better first impression. Young was paired with an offensive-minded genius head coach in Frank Reich and had Adam Thielen, Miles Sanders, Chubba Hubbard, DJ Chark, and Hayden Hurst headlining a solid set of weapons. Carolina also played in football's worst division and had one of the league's weakest schedules. The pieces were there for Young to have, uh, well, a not-so-disastrous rookie campaign. And yet, disastrous it was, folks. Young lost 14-16 to 16 starts and completed 59.8% of pass attempts for 2,877 yards, 11 touchdowns, and 10 interceptions, while also taking 62 sacks. Reich is fired after a 1-10 start. Making matters worse, the Panthers wound up giving away the first overall pick of 2024 to the Chicago Bears. Certainly, Carolina did not have a two-win season on its mind when it sold the farm to the Bears last year so they could get young. The Kansas City Chiefs offense. Over Patrick Mahomes' first five seasons as the Chiefs' starting QB, the team twice finished as the league's number one scoring offense. But inexplicably, the defending champion's offense was an issue all season long. 
Incredibly, it was the Chiefs' defense that propelled the team to 11 wins in an 8th straight AFC West Division crown. KC ranked 15th in scoring offense with 21.8 points per game, and they were 9th in total yards for. He missed two games, yes, but Travis Kelsey failed to reach 1K receiving for the first time since 2015. Mahomes finished with 27 passing TDs, 14 fewer than what he tossed a year ago. His 14 interceptions were also a career worst. Then we got the receivers. After Kelsey and Rasheed Rice, Justin Watson was the team's receiving leader with 460 yards. Then you remember that Marquez Valdez Scantling dropping a game winning TD against Philly and Kadarius Tony's offside penalty that cost them a win over the Bills. If the Steve Spagnolo led defense didn't go from solid to elite elite, the Chiefs would have very well handed the division to the Denver Broncos. But what do you think was the biggest disappointment of the 2023 NFL season? Let us know in the comment section below. If you liked this video and learned a thing or two, clicking the like button helps out a ton. And hey, we appreciate it. If this is your first time coming around to TPS though, subscribing is a great idea because we put out videos like this every single day. But as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next time.